All right. So a few questions that's been coming up. Um, we've been at, getting requests for a detox. <laughs> there it is. We've been getting questions about hemp hearts, hemp flakes, how to use them. We're going to go over all of that fun stuff today, okay? Um, so hope you'll enjoy this one. Keep, keep up with your questions before we go today. I'll try to make sure if anybody's struggling with any aspect of the program, we, we will get to it. Let's just start with reinforcement of what I've been teaching. I don't know if it's good for y'all, but it is good for me if I can get people to get it. The reason this program, I'm not just saying it, the reason this program I think is the most powerful lifestyle on the planet Earth as it relates to nutrition and eating, number one, we do our best in our own weak way, all of us, not me, all of us corporately to put Jesus first. You know, we got the fruit of the Spirit in our lives and we're coming back to the Bible and the fruit of the Spirit are being exhibited. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith. And then next, we have a powerful, powerful set of components that if we live by them daily, we're accomplishing something pretty grand. And it is the following. I might even get on the board to illustrate this. We have been talking about it. We'll get to hemp hearts. We've been talking about this. Can you mute that, Lisa? Okay, you got it. I'm gonna let Lisa try to so I don't stop, start, stop, start. So here, this is our former lifestyle. Y'all stay with me. I'm gonna do some teaching why lifestyle is so much more important than dieting. Y'all know I tell the truth. Diets do not work. The first three letters of the word diet spell die. Anything we start with and can't stay with for the rest of our life is just a waste of time. I'll say that again. The first three letters of the word diet spell die. Anything we start with and don't stay with forever is a total, utter waste of our time. In fact, it can be detrimental to good health to yo-yo diet. We have a whole lesson on that that we talked about, yo-yo dieting. So we don't want to do that. We've got to find a practical, sustainable, and fun lifestyle that works outwardly and inwardly. Talked to the brother last night. He looks to be in really good condition, brother Tony. And Tony, he, he recently uh, had to go to the hospital. He had some blood clots but he's muscular, looks fit. And he said, you know, it's just like they told him, don't matter what you look like on the outside. It matters what's going on on the inside. Y'all, there's probably no telling how much damage I've done before I got hold of this program that one day I'll have to deal with. Uh, I've already had to deal with a lot of it. But the sooner I can stop that, the more prospect there is for me to continue to live a long life, a quality life, a happy life, a joyful life, a more abundant life in him. The quicker you draw your line in the sand, the better it is. And, and we start with this lifestyle as it relates to nutrition of being willy-nilly. We don't realize like there are people, some of y'all I see in your homes on, on the screen, there are people you would not let in your home and you wouldn't have a conversation with them. We've been comparing food lately to a chemical conversation. When I eat white bread, there's a conversation, chemical conversation going on in my body. The whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. When I eat chicken breast, there's a chemical conversation going on in my body. There's conversations going on. It ain't just about what it tastes like before it gets in here. I know it might taste good, but what's happening when you consume it? We've got to consider all those things. And most of us, I, I'm chief amongst us, comes from a willy-nilly eating lifestyle. I did not honor my temple. I did not consider what I was putting into the temple of God. I just, if it tastes good, my flesh wanted it, and I did it. I had a lifestyle. Therefore, with that lifestyle, I often found myself disgusted with myself, right or wrong, and I wanted to lose weight. 
I didn't realize what I was doing wrong. So here's how my journey went. And then we'll get back to that chart and show you how it parallels what I'm talking about. So my weight, let's say that I was 300 pounds. I'm running 300 pounds and, and I'm just living life on a calendar like everybody else. I'm living life on a calendar like all of you, okay? I'm just living life. Time keeps on slipping and slipping. I'm 300 pounds. I look in the mirror and I say, I want to change. I want to lose weight. And I start some diet or start some pill, start some weird thing. And, and this is what, what my lifestyle would look like, right? So I, I would uh, lose a little weight, but then I'm eating so willy-nilly that weight loss stops real quick, but I'm not doing anything crazy. I just don't have any definitions to live by. I don't have a standard to live by. You know, in the spiritual realm, supposed to be in the natural realm too, in heaven as it is in earth, uh, in earth as it is in heaven. We're, Jesus is our standard. We're supposed to try it. We know we can't, but we're supposed to. We're inexcusable. We're supposed to try to live up to the standards of Christ. We've got a mark to shoot for. We know that our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to his righteousness, but we've got a mark. We've got a standard. We've got a plumb line. But with our eating lifestyle, we don't have a plumb line. It's just whatever. So I'm trying to lose weight. I do okay for a day. And then I think a few Pringles is okay. I think a few combos is okay. I, I, I think a little, little, just, I won't eat the whole slice of cheesecake. Can I just have a bite? And, and my calories are relatively low. I'm not eating too many calories. It's why it's so confusing to everybody. I'm not eating that much. So you're not losing weight. You're just kind of etching around. Luke, you're doing the lukewarm living. And then Friday night, you, you go out with somebody, with your husband, with your wife or whatever, and you go in there to the Jeffersons in Cartersville. And they got the calories on the menu and you get some cheese sticks and, and you get some chicken wings and some French fries and you have no idea that you just had like 4,700 calories that one night and you shot your blood sugar through the roof. So now your weight's going up, your blood sugar went up and then you're just willy nilly in it. Here you come, you're willy nilly in it to next week and your, your weight just keeps doing this. Let me shorten it so you can see it. Your weight keeps doing this. It's kind of just flatlining, goes up, Flat lines goes up, flat lines goes up because we don't have a structured eating lifestyle. I'm going to submit to you, you don't even enjoy that. You're doing it out of habit. You're doing it, you go to the grocery store, you buy the same nut of butters, the same little Debbie's, the same stuff, and you put it in the pantry. And as soon as the devil attacks and you get bored or you get anxious or you need a little pleasure because you can't get outside of your own mind. You go get in the pantry, you look in there while you're watching The Voice, you're watching Reba on The Voice, and the commercial comes on, and you go to the pantry, and you open the pantry, and then and then you go, I can't have that. And you go sit back down, you do that two or three commercials, and two or three commercials later, you've got the Nutter Butters in your hand. That's how it happens. No structured living. You do that just out of habit, and it's going to take a mighty woman of valor, a mighty man of valor. It's going to take a, a big person to say, I'm putting the brakes on that and I'm going to change. This is a stronghold in my life and it's going to take some consistency before I've broken this habit. And then even my flesh is going to appreciate it. The Bible says that at first discipline seems painful, but later it brings peace, doesn't it? Righteousness brings peace. So when we're doing right and we have peace, a lot, ooh, thank you, Lord. Let me give you this real quick. How many of us are exchanging our peace for pleasure? That was good. I have a question. Forget weight loss for a minute. If you've recently had a perfect day, you've had a, a perfect on point day, you finished that day, you did not succumb to temptation, you had two of them, whatever. I have a question. Did you have some peace related to that? Shanice, you always will have access to it. We record every one of them, my sweet sister. Did you have did you have more peace? 
Come on now. Talk to Brother Travis. You can unmute too. Did you have more peace? The last time you had you had pleasure. What's you don't hey, don't don't name, do this for me. Don't name a homemade red velvet cake. Don't don't name that. What's some junk? Like y'all talk to me for just a minute. What's some junk that you just love? Like my junk, I'll tell you my junk. My junk that's hard for me to resist is those regular with the lighthouse on it. I don't even know the name of them. Got the lighthouse on them and it's them kettle chips. That's my junk, boy. If that junk's in the house, I have a hard time. Dr. Murphy says rich crackers, French fries and onion rings, Karen Klein cake and the donuts. Woo! Chips yeah. and the M&Ms. Yeah, woo! Chips and M&Ms. Good Lord. We need to do a whole class on that. Uh, look at all this junk y'all like. Chocolate chip cookies for Nicole. Boy, Nicole, you and I and another lot, we've been best buddies. I'm telling you what. I love my chocolate chip cookies. Yes, Oreos, me too. I like to put the Oreos in the whole milk and let it sink to the bottom and get a spoon and eat that stuff. All right. So did y'all see this jump? Is that pleasure? It is for me. It's, it's like mouth pleasure. It don't make my body feel good. I can't call it bodily pleasure. It's mouth pleasure. Seconds of mouth pleasure. Yes, Sister Shirley saying, yep. Me and me and me and Shirley, we are we on lockstep. It's just it's a few minutes, mm, mouth pleasure, and then it's gone bye-bye. It's kind of like sin. Woo! Uh-oh. Now I'm meddling. I am not calling you eating Oreo sin. I'm not. Jesus said, it's not what goes in you that defiles you, but what, everybody? It's what comes out of you. So I, is this okay? Can I go with this for a minute? Y'all get me in trouble. Either I'm going to get in trouble with y'all or the Lord. If I don't go with this, I'm going to get in trouble with the Lord. I might get in trouble with y'all if I go with this, Deanna. So I want you to stay with me a minute now. Eating an Oreo ain't sin. It's not the Oreo that goes in you that defiles you, but what comes out of you. Me claiming to be a child of the king, a child of God, I'm over 300 pounds. Is this defiling me? Is this dishonoring my God when I go, Mama, I'm so tired. Every time I go for a walk, I can't even walk. My blue jeans run holes in the thighs. Then my feet get blisters on them and get sore. Hey, mama, where's that? Where's that? Uh, you got any of them solo club pups so that my acid, I have something for my acid reflux? Mama, I ain't got no energy. I feel terrible. Oh my goodness, they're going to send me back to the doctor, Mama. Got to go back to the doctor, Mama. Mama, you got any of them little Debbie Nutter Butters in there and some milk? You tell me if it's sin then. Am I meddling? Am I meddling? Am I meddling? I don't mean to. I don't mean to offend you. It's not your nutter butter that got you in trouble. What about this? What about this? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm living under the Lord, eating under the Lord. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't eat that. I don't put that into the temple of the Holy Ghost. I may not say that. I go with a friend to a Mexican restaurant and I order a bowl of chicken soup with no rice because it's Wednesday. And my friend goes, don't you want some of these chips? No, I don't. I don't put that stuff in my temple every day. No, thank you. Now, when I go out Saturday night, I may eat a whole basket of chips and baptize them in the cheese dip, but I still have peace because I don't do that all the time. I do not have a lifestyle of destroying and vandalizing the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when, I, when I'm engaging with these things on a daily basis and I know through the small, still voice within that I ought not be doing that, does it take my peace from me? Cheryl says, here comes discouraging thoughts and failure thoughts after eating all that. Amen. Me too. Been my life. Been my life history. Not just with food. I can remember when I was hooked on the alcohol. That's what my mom calls it. Those of you new to me, I can talk right. I got. I don't have a lot of education, but I got a fair amount of education. I, but I like talking like I like to talk because I live in U Harley. And when you go by U Harley, you hardly see it. And Mama Jackson called it, she called it alcohol. And I got on the alcohol. 
And then I got where I couldn't even sneak the alcohol. I had to do it in public too. I couldn't even go out and enjoy nothing without a glass of wine. A glass of wine turned two, glass of wine two turned into four. And then you know what would happen? Before you know it, I feel guilty. There was a small, still voice saying, stop that. And I would rationalize it and justify it. Woe is to me. It would take my peace. So is that sin when your peace is gone? It is to me. Anything a man or woman does, it's outside of faith. That is not, if it's not a faith, it is what? It's a three-letter word. Y'all help me now. Y'all gonna have to help me, children of God, today. We're reinforcing this together. It's, it's sin. A, hey, man, Cheryl said it's sin. People don't like to hear that. Come back to the Bible. I'm trying to do that with my own life. Somebody reminded me yesterday of all my mistakes. And I did. I said, you're right. Everything that you said about me is right. And in my mind, I was going, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We're coming back to the Bible. We're coming back to the Bible. So anything not of faith is sin. I've got questions for you, and I might hurt your feelings, but I've been doing it too. Woe is me, preaching to the choir. The last time that you were supposed to, you didn't earn a holiday, and you was like, no, no, I shouldn't do it. You had a hog trough day on purpose and just said, I don't care. Did, did it take your peace from you? Did it take your peace? I believe it did. I believe it did. Then that sin. Is Deanna, is, well, sin is sin, Brother Travis. No, wait a minute. Anything a person does, it's not of the faith, it's a sin. So if Deanna believes she ought not have them, and that's it's, she believes that even if God's like going to have them, but she's not on board. She's not getting it through her spirit, but she believes God's against her. She shouldn't do it. She right. shouldn't do it. So you got to start thinking like that. You got to decide what you value more. Do you value pleasure or do you value peace? Now, the last time you had some perfect days, it, it, some of you, like Cheryl said, you had some peace, kind of a peace that passes all understanding. You, you, you got through the temptation, you didn't bite, you stayed with the Lord all day, and you have some peace. I have a question. The kind of pleasure that come from that kind of peace, was it more satisfying than instant, peace, uh, instant pleasure? Wasn't it more satisfying? There's pleasure that comes if you can uh, obtain and hold on to peace. But you've got to have a lifestyle that you believe in that God is sanctioning in order for you to do that. Now I'm going to really get in trouble. I can see the emails coming right now. Everybody that's spending $400 to $800 a month on them shots, Ozempic and Wegovy, you're spending that. Does they give you peace? You might be getting some results, but I got a question. Is it giving you peace? Is it giving you peace that we, that we said, now, Jesus, I don't need you right now. I can do this with a shot. Is that giving us peace? Come on. What would give us peace? Personal development in Jesus. Coming back to the Bible. Now look at this lifestyle that we put up here. This was my lifestyle. Does anybody else see themselves? You just kind of, you just kind of accidentally, snacksidentally eating each up through the years. Does anybody see that? That. I'd be dieting, but that's still what would happen. Because my perfect days were not perfect days. They were still, they weren't pleasure days, but they were lukewarm days. I didn't understand how my body worked enough to do this. After two days on our program, you are in EFB. What's the difference? So after two days, I'm in EFB. Then I lock it down and rip off the knob. Lock, lock, lock it down and rip off the fat-burning knob. I'm not looking at the scales on that third day. I'm seeing that my clothes are starting to fall off. I'm losing the hunk of chunk. I'm losing the jiggly, itchy fat. And I'm focused on that because I'm in a calorie deficit and controlling insulin. Now watch. My weight's coming down. Starts coming down a little slower. But then on the weekend... We we going out. We going out. We got the Kenny Chesney on. We got the Luke Bryan on. Whatever we do it, and, and and you and you your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, you going out, going to good. Where are you going? You going to the 
Applebee's or whatever, wherever you're going. You even gonna get you that little dessert after you have your Applebee's. You've had a good week, and then you get over there and you hog chop it. Your husband's eating all that food, and you say, Well, it ain't fair for him to have it and me not have it too. He's having a little pleasure. I'm gonna have some pleasure too. And and then here's what happens: you hog chop it, boom, and your weight shoots up half of what you lost during the week you put back on from one meal. But you're learning about your body and you're like, oh, they tell me in class. They tell me that after that hog chop, all I did was pull some glucose back into my muscular cells and it attached to water. I didn't put on that much fat. So I'm going to get right back into my lifestyle that I believe God wants me a part of. And I'm going to start having perfect days because I have a standard now. It's not that I'm guessing at it. It's not that I'm watching my calories only. It's not that I can have a little, I'm going to work hard because you know what? I enjoy this. How many of you have done this? How many of you have busted your rear end all week and you planned on having a holiday? You had a holiday. It was enjoyable more so than what it ever has been before because you earned it, looked forward to it. Then you got back on your program, got back in the EFB, and you did that again on the weekend. You earned the right to do it because you worked hard. Has anybody had that experience? And you and your holiday is more enjoyable, isn't it, Sister Shirley? It's more enjoyable. Look, when you do the same things every single day, good or bad, it gets where it's just monotony. It's not enjoyable. That's not what God wants for you. If God wanted you to bust your butt all the time and just work hard all the time, when the prodigal son got home, he wouldn't have said, let's kill the fatted calf and put a ring on his finger and have a party. But here's what the prodigal son learned. I need to be about the father's business. Occasionally, we're going to have a celebration because once we were lost and now we're found and we get to enjoy everything on this earth. But you know what? We got to get back to work. We got work to do. There's souls to be saved. You know, you're not here to work the job you're working. You're not here to make carpet. You're not here to teach weight loss and nutrition. None of us are here to do that. We're here to worship the Lord. We're here to worship the Lord and we're here to inspire other people no matter what we're doing or what office we hold to bring other people into the kingdom of God. That's what we're here to do. You can't do that if you're miserable. That's your calling. That's my calling. You know how you draw more people in the kingdom? God help me. I've turned more people out, out just because I, oh, I'm looking miserable all the time, acting like I ain't got a God. So many of us have so many what's in our life. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do about my weight? What am I going to do about the blood clots? What am I going to do about the cancer? What am I going to do about my kids and grandkids hooked on drugs? What, 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 what? That's going to get you in all kind of trouble. We need to start thinking about who again. Who is it that saved us? Boy, I'm going to get to crying, y'all. Who is it that saved us? Who is it that redeemed us? Who is it that called us out of bondage? Who is it that called us out of corruption? Who is it that called us out of misery? Who? I'll tell you who. He who is within us is greater than he that's in the world. We got hope, and it ain't no dead hope. It's a lively hope. I got problems. Does anybody here got issues? Physical, mental, family, business, can't pay the Georgia power bill, whatever it is. Have, have you? You got problems? You got issues? So did a lot of people. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'll take care of the rest. He'll start taking care of your health when you put him first and stop putting the chimichanga first. Some of us get up every single day and we can't hit, we think about food all day. We ask why, I know I'm meddling right now. We ask why did my spouse not love me? Why does he not, why does she not want to spend time with me? What is going on? It ain't like it used to be. My life is dull, my life is boring. We've all been there, right? He don't take me nowhere no more. She don't want to do nothing with me no more. You know, we get so caught up in all this stuff. I know I do. When all I got to do, forget that. Let me seek him first. We get up every single day 
Uh, we've got significant others and we wonder why the relationship's deteriorating. We think about food more than we think about them. Uh-oh. We think about food more than we think about the Lord our God who saved us, who's called us into a lively hope that we should be sharing. We act like we dead, people. We got a life ahead of us. Forget the past. Let that memory go. Your memory, you'll get trapped in a closet. Your memory's like a closet, but your vision and imagination's like a universe. When are we going to start living in that again? There's hope for all of us here today. If we get up and stop thinking about what we're going to, you know how you know when you're getting it? You know when you're getting it when you're like, it is seven o'clock, I forgot to eat. <laughs> Some of you saying, that ain't never going to happen. Well, it may not, but I'm telling you, it's happened to me. So you, I forgot to eat. I need to eat something. Oh, Lord. I, what's wrong with these pants? Is these somebody else's pants? Why are they falling off of me? Oh, Lord, I need to put on some weight. You Quit thinking about food all the time. It's going to direct your focus. Think about who, not what. Who, not what. Now watch. So this is my life, right? So with the Shabbat life, I don't, I don't throw my hand. How many of you right here, after the hog trough day, you threw your hands up in the air? And you said, it ain't even worth it. I put, I put back on almost all that weight in one day. Not realizing two perfect days later, I'm back dropping. Okay? So look, look at this over here. Which lifestyle do you want? This is what we're choosing today. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Look, this is what you're choosing. Your old lifestyle of lukewarmness and hog trough days or perfect days and holidays. This lifestyle, look at the difference. With time, there's a more, there gets a further and further gap. It gets better and better and better. Choose. It's Thursday. There's no doubt with all the things that come my way, I will have the opportunity to go right down here in Ye Harley and, and have something over at the Mexican restaurant. If I go, I know what to get, but I'm not going to get there and watch somebody else eat chips and, and just mourn and pout over they can have them and I can't. In fact, I'm going to stay home unless I have to go over there with somebody. I'm going to stay home and I'm going to pull out my little shrimps that I bought me that the dogs almost ate and I'm going to put my little shrimps over my salad that I got and I'm going to put some hemp hearts on it. That's going to be my dinner and I, it's going to taste good, and I'm going to lose body fat. How about you? Have you got a plan? If you fail to plan, you plan on failing. Do you got a plan? All that sounded real good, Brother Travis, but you ain't got nothing to back it up. Watch this. Look at the similarities. This is my insulin chart. This is my insulin chart. This is my old lifestyle. Insulin, is, is there anybody that does not believe me that insulin is a fat storage hormone, an appetite accelerant, and that it's growth hormone, so it stops the efficiency of your fat burning? Do you believe me? Do you believe the report? I believe the report. All right. Now, check it out. So, old lifestyle. On Monday, I had an entire column of Oreos. Pretend. I had an entire column. My blood sugar went through the roof. Now, insulin has to be either exogenously given to me if my pancreas isn't working or my pancreas is going to provide a huge dose of insulin to regulate my blood sugar. My blood sugar will get pulled back down, good. But the insulin levels are going to stay high. They don't get pulled down fast, they taper down. Now watch, you think that you're doing good. So your insulin levels are coming down. See this red line? 
hypothetically, we've got to be below the red line and in a calorie deficit to lose fat. Let me say that again, because this is the most important part about the physiological part of our program. You have to be in a calorie deficit and you have to control insulin in order to lose fat efficiently. So your insulin levels, you're doing the program, you're doing Shibola, they're tapering off and you don't do much wrong. Let's say that you only have two Oreos. You, it's like 75 calories. That was it. Well, my calories are in order. I only had two Oreos. Then I ate a bunch of chicken and broccoli. Well, you didn't spike your blood sugar through the roof. You didn't do that. Not saying that. But they were coming down and you, you popped them a little bit. Like a pop of popcorn. Like this is a bowl of pop, 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 popcorn. Here you pop the popcorn. Pop. Got one little pop. Pop. But it come back up. Starts tapering off on Wednesday. You have a little handful of them kettle chips like old Travis likes. Pop. Thursday, you have a little palm full of peanut M&Ms. Pop. By the way, every snack, y'all remember earlier in this lesson when y'all were putting your snack snacks down, the junk snacks? Did you know there was a void replacement for every one of those, even Cheryl's M&Ms? Atkins M&Ms taste just like M&Ms. Did y'all know? Did you know that there's chips like Double Bites and Quest Chips? Benito's? Did you know that there's Oreos, a mock Oreo? Lenny and Larry makes an Oreo. Did you know that? Did you know that there's void replacements for all of those things that control insulin? Even when we want our knickknacks, we wouldn't have to have our knickknacks. Now look, we go here Thursday, Friday, we're just doing a little wrong. The Bible says a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump, the little foxes spoil the vines. Now here's our lifestyle. Watch. We hog trough it, boom. On Tuesday, we didn't have those Pringles. We didn't have a palm full of M&Ms. We didn't have two Oreos. We're locking it back down so that we can rip, 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 rip off the knob. Now, we don't want to pop it at all. We want to stay perfect until we've earned the right to have one of our many holidays. But let's just say that we have a member who knows how to work the system. And they know that they're deep into fat burning because they look at their weekly calendar in the website and they see that they're in EFB and then they pop it a little bit. It's still staying low because you're not hog troughing it. Do you see? Do you see where old brother Travis is going? But here's the problem, everybody. See this little pop? If you get back to this and are still losing weight, it won't be long until this air is up here again. You see what I'm saying? Go with me. You think you can get away with one glass of wine and it becomes two and you're still popping it low. And then the next thing you know, it's a bottle. So I like to be perfect or holiday. There's no in between for me. This is why our system works. I'm going to take a breath. We're going to look at hemp before we go today. Are there any questions for me? Can't wait to read some of these comments. I got on a rant and I missed a lot of them. Any questions? We want you to go away well loved and satisfied and may the truth set you free. Travis, I just have a comment. All right. I just wanted to say thank you. It was an awesome class. Oh, thank you, doctor. I appreciate you so much. Good to have you. Anybody else? Cheryl, my reward for staying perfect and losing weight to each 10 pound increments, look at there, is to enjoy a real, she has 10 pound weight loss go, then she enjoys a real piece of pie. I love it. She gets that little spike, gets back on the program, that's gone, great job. Love the entire mindset. Hey Travis, can you hear me? This is Kendra. Hey Kendra. Hey, um. All of, I've been doing the program for a year, uh, but my goal weight is uh, 110, so I've been aiming at 800 calories all year long. But yesterday you said something about we shouldn't go below 1,000. 
And so that has me a little bit worried. Am I still okay? I mean, because I'm a smaller person, so yeah. I'm going to have a lower weight anyway. Am I okay at aiming at 800? Absolutely. As long as you're getting 45, 50, 60 grams of protein a day, you'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Nadine, Lisa, uh, yeah, Lisa's got you, Nadine. Thank you, Nadine. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? Travis, I have a question. Hey, um, I feel, hey, I feel like I should know this already, but I don't. So what's the difference between a holiday and a hollow meal? I think she may tell me I'm wrong. I think Patricia Hurt actually coined that term, and I started using it. So um, holiday, when I started, it didn't matter if I licked the cheese dust off a of Dorito. If I lost my discipline, I called it a holiday, no matter how small or how big. That kind of thinking did hold me back some. We still subscribe to it today, but it held me back because often I would go, well, I've already blown it. I might as well blow it big time. And there would be times as I lost a lot of weight that I would have too much of a surplus of calories. So the lower you get, the, the closer you get to go, the harder it is to subscribe to holiday, taking an entire day off, eating whatever you want all day. A holiday meal is the best practice in that, um, let's say Saturday is going to be my holiday, will do right during my day but then take off that night for that dinner, that would be a hollow meal. So a hollow meal means you didn't take off the whole day. You just took off one of your eating episodes to eat something that you really wanted. Another thing to think about is on your holidays, if you can stay below, no matter what you eat, even if you made the day eating Moose Tracks ice cream, if you can stay below, you'll still spike insulin through the roof, but you cannot put on fat without a surplus of calories. So if you keep your overall daily calorie intake on holidays at uh, your ideal weight times eight in calories, then you'll never miss a beat. So that holiday meal is taking one eating episode off as opposed to the whole day. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Christy. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you're still with us and here. What a journey. What perils, but what goodness. Without perils, Sister Shirley, the Lord wouldn't be able to show us his goodness. Anybody else? Any questions, comments? All right. I'm on uh, hemp hearts, hemp flakes, questions about that. By the way, if you place a shibby shop order, uh, make sure if we don't send it, we send it. Shibby shop orders, you're going to get this 30 different uh, meal ideas with hemp hearts where it says hemp hearts that's interchangeable with hemp flakes or some combination so let me know how these sound to you uh, and I could come up with a hundred of them there, there's just so many good hemp heart hemp ways to eat hemp hearts hemp flakes hemp hearts are a category six superfood they're a category six superfood, hemp seed R2. Means they contain all the macronutrients. They have regenerative power. They help regenerate living tissue. They are quite possibly the healthiest food on the planet Earth. I told them yesterday, if I could take three things with me, I would take fish, because I can fish, superfood there, that's a lean protein, hemp hearts and MCT and my health would thrive. So uh, hemp hearts are amazing. They can be used as a full protein component in place of meat, or they can be used as a condiment, just you know, a tablespoon on a salad with grilled chicken, what, what not. They're gonna help restore regularity, help remove toxins and waste through the system. You don't wanna go adding them to everything in big quantities because they do have calories. Hemp flakes are category one plus two. They're a one plus two. They, they're used the same way as we use hemp hearts, but we can have them with 
uh, in, in larger quantities with carbohydrate, with fruit, because they're lower in fat. You might think that hemp flakes are superior because they're a one plus two instead of a six. It depends on what your goal, goal is. If your goal is detoxification and wellness, hemp hearts are better. Recovery, hemp hearts. For straight up strict weight loss, hemp flakes are better, but they're both great. I come up with some recipes, example, how to use them. Let me know if any of these sound delicious. And you might have some questions. I think I covered about every way imaginable to have them. Uh, I could come up with more, but it would just be moving out a vegetable or something. Hemp heart omelet, hemp and berry yogurt parfait, hemp smoothie bowl, hemp pancakes, savory hemp muffins, hemp seed porridge, hemp and avocado toast, hemp and cottage cheese bowl, hemp protein bars. I cannot equal the homemade hemp bar though. The homemade hemp bars that come from Canada, they're the best. I can't equal them. But there's you an option if you don't want to buy the those bars. Spinach and hemp heart scramble, chicken hemp salad, hemp crusted steaks, spicy hemp shrimp bowl, hemp and turkey lettuce wraps, salmon hemp patties, hemp heart stuffed peppers, avocado hemp chicken salad, hemp heart soup, beef and hemp stir fry, mushroom hemp tacos, grilled hemp chicken, hemp crusted cod, zucchini hemp boats, eggplant and hemp bake, lamb hemp meatballs, cauliflower hemp pizza, kale and hemp heart saute. Show you how simple these are. I made sure they're simple. Chop kale, hemp hearts, diced chicken, saute together with olive oil in this case to give it a little more flavor. Of course, if you want to make it better for weight loss, you can use MCT. Pork and hemp skewers, hemp heart ratatouille, spinach and feta hemp stuffed chicken. So there's 30 different meal ideas using nothing but hemp hearts or hemp flakes. Anybody that purchases an order from the Shibby Shop, you're keeping us afloat, keeping us uh, going forward with our mission. You, we'll send these to you in a document. They'll be added to the library anyway, but you'd have to kind of find them. So just, uh, just, just a way for us to say thank you. Let's do a little extra work to say thank you for keeping the lights on around here. Surely they're all going to be in the library by the end of the week, most likely, uh, but the girls have to put them in the library the right way. Uh, but also, if you place a Shibby Shop order, we'll send that document to you. Surely, if you've ordered recently, we're not going to pick on you that way. Just let Lisa know. She'll send them. Y'all know us by now. We don't do things like that. If you order something recently, it's no problem. We'd love for you to order again, but anybody else? Questions, comments about hemp? Hope you had a good class. We love you so much. Hope that you'll continue to pray for Shibboleth, pray for my home, um, pray, pray, for, pray for our members. We just need you. Uh, prayer is powerful and wonderful. Let's continue to move forward. Have forgiving hearts toward one another. Support each other's weight loss and wellness efforts. <clears throat> Travis, I have a I have a question about the hemp. Right. Um, I I found a product at Wal uh, Walmart, and it says just hemp foods, hemp protein plus fiber. Um, is that the same as flakes? Can you tell me the overall uh, nutritional profile for protein, carbs, and fat? Okay, the fat is, well, the calories is 110. The fat is 2.5. Carbs uh, carbs are 13. Fiber is 11. Sugar is 1. Total protein, 11. Okay, so whatever that is, one of mm -hmm. those things would be a snack. Two of them would be a category, category 1. Yeah, because the ingredients, it just says high fiber hemp protein powder. That's all it has for the ingredient. Yeah. 
So you got to mix it with something because it's a powder, right? Yeah. So you would use that just like you use Beverly UMP. Okay. Anybody else? Don't forget, we need partners. We need them. We need them fast. We need partners, Faithfully Fit members. God bless you if you're already a partner, Faithfully Fit member. If there's anything I can do to enhance your journey, let me know. I'm working around the clock, not complaining about it. Love every minute of it. I uh, appreciate the grace people show me when I miss the mark. You can't get to everything. Uh, just appreciate you so much. I love doing what the Lord's called me to do, and I can't do it without you. And, uh, please keep praying that I walk in faith and not fear. My flesh is a coward. Can we still order the Blowtorch book? You certainly can. Yeah, we, we sold, I think, like 200 copies. We've got 800 more to sell. Travis, are they still going out by June 1st? That's is that your plan? Yep. We're all, everything's on schedule. Yep. And then I just have one other question about the recipes on the weight loss meter. If they're negative three, those are the best ones for weight loss, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I wasn't sure if it was negative one or negative three. Thank you. Yeah. If uh, what she's talking about, if you're kind of new around here in the food library, almost every food is ranked every recipe, almost all, and they, we give it a meter and it goes from positive three to negative three. Zero means it won't hurt you, but it won't help you. So the higher the number, the more we got to be careful with frequency and portion. The less the number, the better it is for weight loss. So negative three is the best, a positive three is the worst. Still approve, approve but you got to be careful. All right, y'all. I enjoyed being with you. Anybody feel like closing us out in a word of prayer? Don't forget tonight, we have our Faithfully Fit group, our partner group tonight uh, at 7. And then at 8 o'clock, we have our wellness company overview. We'll be, what we did with peak performance, we made an entire class just about peak performance. We'll be doing that with collagen tonight. Any questions or comments? Oh, okay, yes, yes. You can sign up for the text, www.travis.live. Uh, you can also um, go to class. Let me show you that. You can catch the schedule. We have a great challenge going on next week. Don't miss that. Let me tell you what's coming up before y'all go. So you've got um, class schedule. Let me show you this first. This is the home screen. Well, y'all are probably going to say he's ruining our pretty home page. I'm not interested in home pages. I'm interested in helping people change their life. So those members, if you'll watch this on the home page, you'll see this begin to come alive. We're not asking anything from anybody. They can come Monday through Friday. I think next week I'll probably do Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Right now it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, where you can catch all of those beginner classes here. You'll begin, we hope to see a chat. You'll begin, I hope to see over here, uh, a meal plan for people so that you can bring friends there and let them get the help without them having to give me something. I don't want to be like the world and require for them to come to class and get help. I don't want to require anything. That's not what God called me to do. Hopefully there'll be a percentage of those people that want to come go with us and become a member because it is very inexpensive and they want our work to continue. That is the hope with this. Uh, if you're looking for class times, you go to class times. And of course, this will fill back up for next week. We're getting toward the end of a week. So here you'll see any classes that you that you sign up for. First class is always free. Uh, and then we've got a great challenge coming up next week. Next week's challenge is the Vault 3. If you don't have your orientation and meal plan, get that from Lisa. It's a one-week challenge where you have the opportunity to earn two holidays during the week with your effort. So make sure you get that. If you want to do that challenge next week, 
Then the next week, next a week from Monday, we're doing a one week de- um, we're doing a one week detox, and we'll be doing that u- utilizing a lot of these hemp recipes. We're slowly getting our arms around it and able to not be fly by our seat. We're about fifty percent of the way of getting our arms around it, so that we can put out a forward looking schedule for you. Right now, I'm having to always stop and stop, drop, and fight a fire. Look, look forward to uh, seeing very soon the Shibby Shop drop wows. I think y'all will enjoy those wow challenges. And we got some prey challenges coming up for our Faithfully Fit members. It's just like a wow challenge, except for we incorporate a daily devotion that you have to do. Works just like a wow for Faithfully Fit members, except for there'll be uh, either like a memory verse or a devotion that you have to do to including your meal plan. They're called prey challenges. Anybody else? Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I don't feel that was deserved. How do you do all, all of that? Um, that means a lot to me that you would even, even ask. Mainly, I sit here and I don't go anywhere and I don't do very much <laughs> but this. <laughs> And this is my favorite thing. So other than having to work other other jobs to bring in a little money, I try not to do anything during my days, but pretty much sit here and do weight loss. Anybody else? I'm so excited to see the changes coming to the front page, the home page of the website, Travis. That's awesome. I'm so happy to see that, that you're going to get some life moving through there with those videos. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. It's always been um, probably a solid critique if you think we're trying to be a company, but I've always wanted just to mess that homepage up. <laughs> Let it be something active, a place that people can come to, not to solicit just an email address and bombard them with advertisements, but somewhere they can come get real help. You know, so I appreciate that comment. Anybody else? All right. We love y'all so much. Who wants to close us out? I know it's not my time to do it, but I will. Does somebody have an option to do it? I'll pray for everyone. Thank you, Cheryl. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you today uh, with a thankful heart. Father, that we are stepping into the new day. Um, let this month be one of great blessing. Let this one, uh, this month be one of great vision for all of us and for our, uh, our founder, Lord, that you would bless the entire staff of Shibboleth, everyone it takes, the team, uh, to keep this ministry going. Lord, help to, uh, give them the tools they need give them the strength, the provision, protection. Lord, help to inspire each of us daily with what we can do to touch the uh, lives of others. Uh, we each come in contact with people every day uh, that we know could benefit from Shibboleth and let us uh, also bless the name of the Lord every day and never forget to give you praise for the changes that we have had in our life. Lord, that we could reach each one uh, with an encouraging word uh, to pull them closer in to you, but also into this ministry of uh, Shibboleth to uh, help to give them what they need. Um, because we know that this program is from you, Lord. We know that we are witnessing what happens in real life, real time. Our eyes are witnessing what happens when we rededicate what you have given. Yes. Uh, when we rededicate that to you, uh, the blessing that you have the ability to put on it. And we also see what happens when we don't give Word. what you have provided, uh, when we don't dedicate that to you. We've also been living witness to that, Lord. We are seeing right now before our eyes what happens 
uh, in what I call uh, the gray. We are not uh, supposed to be in that lukewarm state, Lord. We are either hot or cold, and your word has been confirmed daily. Mm. We thank you, Father, for Travis. We thank you for all that you've done, and we give praise, honor, and glory in all things. Amen. 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 Lord, help. Amen. Just got my toes stepped all over. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. Appreciate that word and that prayer. Good gracious. Lord, help me. That's all I know to say. Lord, help me be better. Love y'all. Appreciate you. And Lord willing, we'll see some of you tonight. I think I'll get to drop some of our stuff we've been working on today in the members only group. I'm hoping um, so y'all can see some short content instead of this long winded stuff I do. All right. Love y'all. Talk to you soon.